We're pleased to be joined by Allison Maltz, Project Coordinator for Eco Schools USA in New Jersey at the New Jersey Autobahn. Good to see you, Allison. Thank you, you too. You know, this is part of an ongoing discussion we're having about outdoor education, if mm -hmm. you will. By the way, for those who don't know what Echo Schools USA in New Jersey are, what are they? Uh, Eco Schools. Eco. Uh, Eco Schools. Yeah, that's okay. It's actually um, an international program. It's in 65 countries. Ecological. No, it, well, it, the program itself is just called Eco-Schools. Okay, that's the international program. In the United States, it's is that called, short for anything? Well, what means ecological, but the actual title of the program is Got Eco it. Schools. And what does it do? Uh, well, in New Jersey, the way the programs run is it provides teachers a way to do environmental and sustainability education within their own curriculum. So it provides for them a structure so that when they take children outside, they have a purpose and a structure for what they're going to accomplish. And the kids get to design their own project to make for an example. improvement. So for biodiversity. Um, biodiversity? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a thing called biodiversity. There is a thing called biodiversity. <laughs> and uh, within eco schools, we have what we call our pathways, and biodiversity is just one. So if your school wants to improve biodiversity, to improve habitat for animals, <coughs> birds in New Jersey, um, kids can do plantings, they can plant a rain garden, they can put up birdhouses, anything to draw in more native biodiversity to New Jersey. So that would be the first step if a teacher wanted to do that pathway with their students. You can also do, um, within eco schools, you can focus on energy reductions. Energy so, reduction, mm -hmm, what, yeah. do you, what do you mean by that? So uh, kids would actually go to the wall, flip on a switch, how many light bulbs You were looking for the on? wall right now. I for was, a switch. yeah, I was looking so you for a switch. So you play this out, you go to a wall. I go to the wall, I flick on a switch, the kids count how many light bulbs are up there, uh, a facilities director or somebody who can reach up that high says how many watts that bulb's in. And then I have a carbon calculator that they can actually put in the number of bulbs that went on and the watts. And for the 180 day school year, they can figure out how many greenhouse gases you, are being put out from that one switch. Now it's real and you can set a goal. You can say that we want to reduce our greenhouse gas our emissions. Our carbon footprint. Mm -hmm. so, so for example, our, our lighting uh, expert, Pete Trues, who you can't see, yeah. but he's mm -hmm. over there managing the lights. So if students were to come in here and they'd say, hey, you have all these lights, right? Right. right. And then they're talking to Pete about, well, why do you need all these lights? Right. And even though you have to make me look younger and better, but the most, uh, beyond that, yep. the point is, in all seriousness, you could reduce the number of yes. lights on. Lights on, hours that they're on, and not just the lights, but what are the other energy vampires that are plugged into the wall? So you're using all these terms, energy vampires? So your VCR that doesn't work anymore, that's still plugged in, but drawing energy from the wall. You're talking about me because you're wall. right. Okay, and why is that bad? <laughs> well, because it's creating greenhouse gases. And so you're making it real for the students to understand how they can reduce greenhouse wow. gases and, and they can actually measure it. It's not just an idea, but it's measurable. They can actually set a goal for reduction and, and you know, make their own. That is substantive, that's real, that's important. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, the whole question of, uh, of it's called, out, a lot of this whole thing about outdoor education, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what does it mean to you? So it doesn't have to be um, chairs or a table outdoors. The idea is that we're using the outdoors for some real concept. Um, I'll give you an example. So kids in an urban school up in Jersey City, they saw the lichen on trees around their school. And they knew that that lichen determined the, the air quality. Lichen, so it's the green and white stuff on the trees. Now I got okay? it. Okay? They, that's an indicator of air quality. Depending on the lichen that'll grow on a tree, tells you the quality of air that you have outdoors. Because some can only survive in some environments. Okay, so now the kids can use that as an indicator to tell us mm, we got an issue with air quality here. So um, they then thought about what's this doing to our indoors? Okay, that air is coming in. So they went inside and they put out some Vaseline in cups and they let particulates just matter form on those cups for a couple days to see what kind of gross stuff was in the air. Um, now they had something they could show people, look what's in our air. And the students came up with an idea of creating um, covers for the windows out of recycled materials to gather more of this matter, uh, to clean the air for them, to make their own so air filters. So it wouldn't filters. get into the classroom. Mm -hmm, to keep it from getting into the classroom, their own air filters. It was their, 
their engineering challenge. It was their solution this that they came in up with. City? This happened in Jersey City. So people will say, oh, outdoor education, outdoor learning only happens in suburban rural environments, no, you everywhere, say? No, everywhere, everywhere. Every type of landscape in New Jersey can do outdoor education. But because of this, the students were able to make, not only did they make those air filters, but they were able to get, convince enough people to stop idling around a school and actually had the bus route changed because there they are in Jersey City with not enough trees. So now they changed the route of the buses so it's not just going all the way around. Well, what about all, all the cars that, that are in the lane when we're dropping our kids off? I didn't in the get morning. that far deep into it. I just but, know but, what but the, the kids buses, came up with. But, yeah. but my point is, yep. those are, it's so interesting. There are certain things that quote unquote outdoor, mm -hmm. you can learn about science, about the, mm -hmm. the ecosystem, mm -hmm. and a whole range of other aspects of our life that you could learn indoors, but it's a different kind of learning. Well, it's more of a simulation indoors. If you're gonna take them outdoors, you haven't a chance for an authentic learning experience. Now they can use all their senses, potentially. I see people that are even tasting food in gardens, so um, it really gets them engaged to a deeper level. The, the students are much more excited. The teachers are very excited. Yeah, talk about the teachers, because I'm, I'm curious about this. If you don't mind, could no. we add a little extra time for you on this? Yeah. Okay. How do you train teachers to quote unquote teach in this environment outside the classroom? They love it. Uh, it, it first, I get them excited. Okay, that's the first important part. They have to. They have to want to do this, and mostly they do. It's something new. Most teachers want this. They want this. Yeah, it's their opportunity to have that outdoor time, but with purpose. So now it's not just free time play, but they actually have a structure that what their students are going to accomplish. The students are going to do an audit. Um, that's the first part of the Eco Schools program. We create that for them so they An know what they're meeting. looking for. They're looking at um, things around the school grounds that are in that pathway, so biodiversity. What would you look for for biodiversity? Sure. Do you have a pond? Do you have a meadow? What's your trees like? How diverse is that? So this gives them a way to look and measure those things and figure out where can we make it better? What more can we put here? I'm curious about this. The, you're the project coordinator for Eco Schools USA in New Jersey. Your funding comes from, is it coming from the government? Mostly it comes from private funders and corporations. PSE&G is a big funder. Um, we've recently had Honeywell. It, well, actually for the past several years, Honeywell has been a provider. Um, Dodge Foundation has in the past funded us. So corporations and foundations, mm -hmm. and corporate mm -hmm. foundations as well. Mm -hmm. Curious about this, it, at the New Jersey Audubon, people may not know what the New Jersey Audubon yeah. is. So New Jersey Audubon is the oldest and largest conservation agency in New Jersey. They started in 1897, so just about 100, 121 years old. They predate the National Audubon Society. They're right. very excited about that. But the whole role is to improve the environment and to educate New Jersey citizens so that they can do the same, to get them interested in, in preserving habitat for our birds, our animals. You love this stuff. I do love this stuff, yeah, absolutely. But real quick, um, what is a green ribbon school? So the U.S. Department of Education several years ago um, collaborated with the EPA and, and several other... Environmental other, Protection mm -hmm, Agency. Yeah. What, if we were going to have a green school, what would it be? So they asked, they got the input of, you know, good 50, 60 agencies. What's a green school look like? And they took everybody's input and they said, well, first, you can't have a negative environmental impact. You shouldn't be putting out a lot of carbon emissions with your lighting, your gas, your electricity. Um, you shouldn't be using a lot of water. You shouldn't be using bad chemicals, which are going to hurt, you know, the, the habitat. Um, you should have clean water for drinking. The, the students should be outdoor learning. They should be spending more, out, more time outdoor playing. And they should be learning the importance of the environment so that they can grow up to be environmental stewards. So we cr they created this program that's managed by each state in New Jersey. Um, it's managed by the New Jersey Audubon and the Department of Education. I, I, I'm, I'm sorry for doing this because mm -hmm. it's interest of time. So then they pick these green ribbon schools. Mm -hmm. We do, we select That's them. a big deal to be picked. It is a big deal, yeah, it's very exciting. And we have one that'll be on the show a little later today, Alder Avenue, they were picked You mean in our panel ago. discussion? In our having... panel discussion, yes. You're joining us on the panel discussion? I am, yeah, yeah. And I'll give a shout out to this year's two New Jersey Green Ribbon Schools. We have North Brunswick Regional High School and we have Highland Regional High School. You love what, you really do love what you do, Allison Mulch. Uh, project coordinator for Eco Schools USA uh, in New Jersey at the New Jersey Audubon. You're a great guest. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Looking awesome. forward to the other coming. Don't go yet. Oh, okay. Just stay right there. Okay. Okay. Be right back right after this.
The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the PNC Foundation, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the New Jersey Education Association, Berkeley College, Choose New Jersey, the law firm of Gibbons PC, and by Verizon. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.